hello and um, welcome back. Um, I'm hoping that you might have watched the first step of the process which is called noticing. This video is about the second step of the process which is called creating space. And this one I think actually is probably one of the hardest steps to grasp because creating space, what, what does that actually mean in a real concrete sense? And I think it has two sort of main ideas for me. Um, first of all, when I thought about how did I begin to heal my relationship with food and body, um, the idea of space came to mind in that I, I gave myself space, and by space, I actually, what I mean is time, time and attention, actually, to do that, in that I made space in my life for the active pursuit of healing my relationship with food and body. And for me, that came in the form of um, going to um, a food addiction group, uh, which was a hugely... Um, which was a hugely transformative and very interesting part of my journey. Um, I had craniosacral therapy with, um, with a very trusted um, woman who's now become a very dear friend. I read a lot of books on the subject, um, on the subject of food addiction and, um, and neurology. I just committed to giving myself space in my, in my life for the pursuit of this healing. And for example, coming to an I Eat What I Need group, giving yourself two hours a week, that is creating a space in your life for the healing of your relationship with food and body. And so often I hear, especially from women, that there is just no space for their own personal development and healing. There is there is work and there is homemaking and there and there are children and and even if there are not children there there is the partner and the, and, the, and there's the families and there's the elderly parents and and there's just a whole list of other people's needs and there is no space for the meeting of their own needs um, and so creating space I think is a really important first step to prioritizing your own needs so that you can then be in service to others from a space of feeling well and feeling strong and feeling full, um, which I think is a much more healthy place from which to serve other people. Then the other aspect of creating space that we really work with very deeply within our groups is about creating a kind of neurological space, almost like a brain space, in between the thought that arises in the brain and the action of actually doing something. Um, so in my groups, I really enjoy a bit of sort of paper-based um, creative fun. So I've written in the middle of this paper here, creating space. And here I've drawn a picture of, um, this is a thought, the thought of perhaps having some chocolate and this is the action of eating the chocolate. And the thing about this space between the thought of, mmm, let's eat something, and then the action of actually eating something is very often when we are in habit and when we are in unconscious action, the space is absolutely minuscule. We are talking nanoseconds. And they've actually calculated this, you know, scientists. So when you have a habitual action, so for example, let's say if you're a great tennis player, and you just practice so many times that your hand can just whack that ball really, really quickly, the arm will whack the ball quicker than the brain can process the fact that your hand has whacked the ball, if that makes sense. So basically unconscious action is faster than conscious thought, yeah? Which is why we are able to do so many things like driving home from work, or even, you know, getting something out of the fridge, um, making a cup of tea, we're able to do all these things completely unconsciously without any sort of awareness or attention. Um, and that is a big issue for you if you have habitual behaviour that you want to change, because if you're not aware of something, 
how can you possibly change it? If your hand is just batting that ball without you even realizing, if your hand is just stuffing your face without any conscious awareness, how can you stop it? Because it's, it's going faster than your brain can say stop. Um, so that's a huge challenge. That's a huge challenge. And so the space in terms of creating is, is this space between the thought and the action. And what we want is for gradually and slowly, we want to make this space a bit bigger and a bit longer. Um, we want to create space so that we can move into conscious actions and new ways of being that give us much more freedom um, of how we live our lives, that we're not stuck on automatic pilot, we're not stuck in these very robotic mechanical routines of this is just what happens to me because these are the routines and habits of my life. We want to step outside of that and make changes and not just because this is just what happens. So, um, so for me, when I drew this picture, I was thinking about how this is kind of the unconscious pathway, the habitual pathway that leads straight to eating. But there is another path and we can create space. I've drawn a great big syringe here and the syringe for me is about injecting something into that space. So let's say the thought comes of, mm, I want some chocolate. In that space, before you eat any chocolate, what are we going to inject into that space and there's lots of different things you can project into that space um, on my syringe here I've written um, motivation so you can inject a bit of motivation in there so why would I not eat the chocolate basically maybe for me I might think well I might have a little look for example if I can show you that quickly I have a little card um, which which where I've written down my motivation as to why I might choose to not eat, maybe, when I'm not hungry. Um, and for me, it's about gaining um, freedom from, from, from these habitual pathways, about being able to have a choice. Um, it's about reclaiming my right to to be a natural eater, actually. Um, and I feel very motivated by that. I feel very motivated by my own sense of personal freedom because I love feeling free. So remembering that I love to feel free might help me to move away from that very, um, what feels like a very kind of, a very strong pull into, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Into this inexorable, oh, I'm just going to eat because that's what I've always done. You know, I'm going to eat the chocolate at three o'clock because I've always eaten the chocolate at three o'clock. That's a prison right there. You know, what if you don't want to eat chocolate at three o'clock? What if you want to do something different at three o'clock? What if you want to have chocolate at five o'clock? You know, it's, it's, um, what if I want to break free? I want to break free. Um, another thing I've put here also in my little syringe is choice. Um, and choice is a massive one because very often I think our eating behaviours are characterised by lack of choice. So we're eating because of habit. We may have actually been eating in the past because we were forced to perhaps by, um, by our parents um, or, it's, or there might be a whole host of reasons why we don't have a choice around food. Um, or maybe we don't have permission around food. And the most important thing about creating space, actually, is that you always give yourself the choice to eat or not eat. It's not about creating space so that you never eat again, or so that you only eat to hunger, or it, it's not about giving yourself a rule that says, right, I've noticed the thought for chocolate, now I can never eat chocolate when I notice the thought for chocolate. I, I always have the option to go and eat that chocolate. I always have that option. And if I do, that's, that is my choice, and I own that choice, and I'm not wrong because I made that choice, I'm not less of a person because I made that choice. Everybody has habits, and most of us are eating to habit a lot of the time. So I'm not going to condemn myself for doing that. Um, it's, it's, it's not about creating space so that then we only ever eat consciously and we only eat to hunger. That's completely unrealistic. 
and takes away our choice to actually sometimes eat shit and sometimes eat mindlessly. It happens and it is, and it can be a choice. It can be a choice to do that. Um, I'm also put into this space here, my values as well. And I think that's, for me, that is very important to remember that I eat what I need was born of what I felt was a conflict between my spiritual values of taking what I need from the earth. So I, I'm i very interested in spirituality at the moment. I'm very interested in the spiritual principle of taking what you need. And, and I believe myself to be um, someone who, who wants to be kind and compassionate and generous, both with others and also with myself. And I really felt that in my relationship with food, I felt very limited in that relationship. And I often felt pushed towards kind of taking more. You know, it's like you've got the cake and you're thinking, oh, but I want the bigger bit of cake. You know, I, want you to, I don't want you to have that. Or feeling quite territorial about my food, feeling quite mean about my food, actually. And and sometimes what when I notice that... Um, I, rem I remind myself of my values that actually I, I, I want to learn to eat what I need. I'm not perfect. This is, a this is a struggle. This is a challenge. But I cannot put myself on a pedestal of, like, you know, I'm such a generous person and I give to charity and, you know, and, and I, you know, I, I'm kind and, you know, and I look at other people, maybe I judge them saying, oh, look, that person's so mean with money or they never buy anyone else's a coffee or, you know, and I'm thinking, well, actually wait a moment, in, in my relationship with food, I've really felt very mean and ungenerous in, in many ways, or perhaps on the surface generous, but then later on, this is something I hear also from other eaters a lot, you know, on the surface, you might be very generous and giving lots of very abundant food, because there's this underlying fear that, oh, that's not going to be enough, you know, it's not going to be enough. Um, or also, you know, making sure that, you know, you give everybody else what they need, but then you kind of keep some aside for yourself later. You know, a lot of this stuff going on. And we can't help that. We're human. We need to work on our values of generosity and compassion and, and, and kindness towards ourselves and others. Um, and food is one area when I can work on that. And food is one area when I can kind of realign myself with my values of generosity and of... Um, and of taking what I need from the earth, not more, not less. Um, so that is, that is one, that is, for me, that is the bigger, wider meaning of what it means to create space. Um, and it's a very neurological, brain-based, mental process of bringing a distance between the little impulses and little urges and little thoughts that kind of crop up and then the actual action of, of completing the action of eating or or what, whatever other habit that you have that you, you would like to, to transform. And the thing about creating space, I think the reason why it is so challenging is that we are literally and physically, physiologically, rewiring our brains. Um, rather than barreling down the usual tram lines of automatic pilot and unconscious thought, we are rerouting via this new conscious pathway where we're connecting with our motivation. We are giving ourselves a ch we are giving ourselves a choice. We are remembering our values of um, of generosity and kindness and that takes a really big mental effort because it would be so much easier just to just have the chocolate, just have the thing. It's, it, it takes a million times. I mean, how many times have we just gone straight for the thing that we wanted? How many times have we just had the impulse and just, just done it you know, to, to then to, to go a different way, it's not like we create space once, we create space thousands and thousands and hundreds and millions of times over years and years and years. It's a very imperfect, very messy process of 
kind of falling asleep for a little while and then waking up and like, oh god, I had to create, I need to create space again. I, I feel so in the food. I'm so in the food. Oh god. Whew, I need some space. I need some space. Get back into my practice, you know. So, and then we feel we're kind of like we're working our practice through it and we're creating space and we're feeling a bit more free and then poof, we fall down in the hole again. Oh my god, you know, this is so, I feel so. I feel so in the food again, I'm so attached, you know, ah, okay, create space, create space. So it's really messy, it's a really messy process, it's a, and it's a, it's a day by day, moment by moment, you know, and it's, it's imperfect, and it's as much as you can on a day-to-day -day basis, and this is where I think reminders really come into their own, you know, little, this is where post-its on your fridge, and, you know, and little cards in your wallet, and a note on your phone and, and, you know, coming to the group once a week and texting your friend and ringing up your, this is where the kind of self brainwashing comes in, you know, listening to a talk, watching this video, this is where we've just got to really flood our brains with positive reinforcement of, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. Okay. Yeah. I'm creating space. I, you know, I'm, I'm not falling back into habit you know, as much as I have been, I, you know, I'm committed to this new way, this new part of, of conscious awakening. I, I want more space in my life. Um, I'm giving my spell, myself more space um, to be awake and to make new choices. It's a big one. It's a really, really big one. And it's, it's ultimately, you are creating, you are self-generating your own personal freedom. And that is massive. And only you can do this work for yourself. There's no teacher, no facilitator, no guru that can get inside your head and rewire your brain for you. This is, everybody has to do this for themselves on a moment to moment basis. And, um, and, we, are, and we are seeing every craving, every urge, every food thought as a golden opportunity for rewiring the brain. It's not like, oh no, again, again, it's like, great. The more repetitive and the more habitual the thought, the more opportunities you have for rewiring, 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 new pathway, new pathway, new conscious pathway. And um, that is the beauty of it, I think, that we reevaluate what, what could be a very kind of onerous, a very heavy, very, oh my God, I've got so many habitual thoughts. And so it's great. The more, the merrier, you know, the... the the more frequent, the more obvious, perfect. You know, actually, when it, actually when things start to die down and it becomes more subtle, actually that's when it becomes even more challenging to keep on the well to keep going onto that conscious path. At the beginning, actually, it's so we might be having so many repetitive thoughts that actually creating space is um is actually quite quite clear because it's it's give, we're getting the opportunity hundreds and hundreds of times a day and all I can say to you as someone who's in this process is that from of course I still have these urges and these desires I'm human just like we all are but I will say looking back you know a year ago two years ago three years ago five years ago ten years ago to live in a, a life that feels spacious, that feels open, where there's a possibility for me to be here on my own this afternoon, making this video. I'm not kind of aimlessly sort of pottering around my house. I'm kind of opening cupboards. I'm not in town on a rampage, you know, trying to find something really that's going to hit my buttons. You know, I'm to have the space to be able to do this work to do any sort of work, it's incredible, um, actually. It's an incredible feeling of freedom. It's an incredible feeling of spaciousness in the brain. And it's, that is the massive payoff that we get when we begin this practice of creating space. And over weeks and months and years, even though there are moments that don't feel very spacious, slowly we get these periods of time where, oh, we're having an evening, we're not hungry, we sit down with a cup of tea, a hot water bottle, watch a movie, and we feel just fine, and the fridge is not calling us. 
bliss, absolute bliss. I can't tell you how blissful those moments are for me, how much I treasure those. And it's not like it happens all the time every day, but those kind of open, spacious afternoons, evenings, days, even weeks start to kind of string themselves together until you start feeling like, oh, wow, you know, I'm, I'm really feeling quite free and spacious in my own mind. Um, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. And if you are feeling less than wonderful now, and if you are feeling very full of food thoughts and craving and urges, there is no there is no day when you can start this. It's not like a diet where you can start on a Monday with creating space. We could we do this for our lives. We do this forever. We do this now. Um, with the knowledge and the understanding and the kindness that we will do it imperfectly and we will mess up and fall and go around on this messy journey and, and and that's okay and that's the way that it that's the way it has been for me, that's the way it continues to be for me. And it's it's okay, it's okay if it's not feeling very spacious at the moment. And it's okay if you're not really sure how this is gonna be. And that is what we're here for. That's what the I, what I Need community is here for, is that we are in this process together. We're working through the messy confusion as well. And we're committed to living lives where we feel free. Because we are generating our own freedom for ourselves. Not because we are listening to someone else's dogma about how things should be or what we should eat or... Um, or what we should weigh, or none of that stuff. We're making choices for ourselves in the moment, right now. So wishing you your own practice, your own imperfect and beautiful practice that allows you to create your own freedom for yourself, because you have the power to do that, and I believe that you really do.